And then uh, I need to look at this. I'll to, but sometimes I'm gonna have to turn it to type okay. and pull it over to type. Sweet. Pull it up here. See six attendees. Welcome, guys. Um, we're gonna get started in a minute. You can see we have a little different setup here. Anthony's here with me. Um, ah, I see. So we got some Ronix on there, Vikrants on there, Miklos. Well, we got our usual guys and some others too. Chris Willis, long time no see since yesterday. Um, guys, go ahead and put some. Con there we go. We got our first comment in chat. Eric is number one. Hey, Ronick, saw you yesterday too. Um, okay, Roke. Am I saying your name right? Roke or Roke or Roku? Roke. I hope I'm saying it right. He's like Clint. We got our usuals. These are all our usuals. They're on here every week. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely see some familiar faces on here. Nice. All these guys. Do you guys like the table like this? What do you think? You like the, the different table? We changed it. So we can add, this is so we can actually talk and talk to you guys, talk to each other, have a discussion rather than just my desk. Um, looks interesting. It's one of those things you say to a girl when you, when you want to make her go, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Yeah, I like it too. I like it a lot. We need a good painting for right here, but we'll, we'll figure that out with time. Warm yeah. uh, wrestle. Yeah, the whole idea of this table uh, or having a table here, whether it's this one or another one, is to be able to uh, have the coaches here and have discussions, have three of us here, four of us here if we want, and we can have roundtable discussions. Um, uh, cool. This is my first time on, Sam Gold. Welcome, Sam. First hey, time. Is that one of the Sams I know from the workshops? Go, I, I, don't, I don't know the last name, Gold. Um, but welcome either way. Cool. Okay. A couple so, of guys in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's growing. 36. We'll see if we can get some more. Um, okay, uh, so guys, what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk with Anthony a little bit. Uh, we've got the Integrated Man Summit coming up. It's going to be here in the first weekend of December. And um, to me, that's one of my most favorite events of the year because everybody gets to speak. We get all the fearless coaches to speak like Anthony. Anthony, if you guys don't know, is one of the fearless coaches. He coaches at our workshops and seminars. Uh, he's, an approach, he's an approach machine. He's a... Uh, he's a He's super comfortable with sex, sexuality. He's super comfortable with just, uh, you know, getting right to the point. Um, he's a younger guy in the game. I'm an older guy that, 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 you know, so he's really got a lot of energy in it right now. And he's really, uh, you know, moving. And when he started with us, uh, how many years ago was that? Damn, probably four years ago. Almost, almost four five. years ago. Yeah, you were terrified to talk to anybody. Yeah, I'm terrified. And I tell everybody this, and I don't know if you hate it when I tell people this, but <laughs> Saturday night of his first workshop, we took him out to a bar, and he snuck home and ditched us. Yeah. And uh, first interaction scared the life out of me. You know, yeah. I don't want any more of that. Oh, is that what it was the first interaction scared you when you left? Is yeah. That what yeah. Me, Fabian, had talked to these two year olds, and I just couldn't hold a conversation. I was asking all these interview questions, and she was clearly getting bored. Taps her friends, like, hey, I gotta go to the restroom, and I was like, okay, that was a weird. So they went to the restroom, they obviously never came back because they never do when they had to go to the restroom. And, and you so, felt really rejected. Oh, yeah. Big yeah. time. Fucking got out of there. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was angry. Yeah. But you showed up the next day. You came back. Yeah. yeah. So that was awesome. Um, any of you guys ever have that experience? Yeah. yeah. Total transformation four years, Trey. So have you ever had an experience like that? I remember one experience I had. I went to a bar in, um, sounds like me, I went to a bar in Long Beach and I was out with my friend and and I went out with this guy that's really bad with women. And I thought to myself, this is probably only gonna hurt, make it harder for me, mm -hmm. but he's my friend, I wanna help him out. So we started talking to these two girls and it was going really well. Me and my girl were just having a great old time sitting out there on the patio, just talking away. And I could feel his girl and him over here, I could feel the energy getting worse and worse. <laughs> and I was like, so I'm trying like, ah, oh, fuck. And then suddenly his girl turns, or okay. my friend's girl turns <clears throat> towards the girl I'm talking to and goes, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the bathroom. Uh, come with me. And she goes, and my girl looks and goes, no, I'm fine. I'll, I'll just come back. I'll be here when you're done. And she goes, and she turns around and they, you can see the girl's frustration in her face. She goes, no, I'm going to the bathroom. You need to come with me. I love it. And <laughs> she's like, no. Nah. Finally, she goes, okay. She says, I'll be, I'll be over here. Come find me. Come find yeah. me. And she wanders up, wanders off. Yeah. And I look at my friend and I was like, you're going to make this night tough, are you? You're going to make it challenging for me. And so um, we all have nights like that. So. 
I've had many nights like that, dude. So many of those nights going in there feeling like that. Um, you know, they grow you, dude, after a while. Once you get past the frustration of it, you just start to see that. Okay, I had a bad night. I'm off a little bit tonight. Or maybe that group in particular triggered me a certain way. Yeah. That's probably just not my group right now. And you yeah. react to it differently now, uh, don't you? Because, oh, yeah, yeah if, if you're off tonight, you're off tonight. I'll be on tomorrow or I'll be on in an hour. Oh, for sure. You know, whereas in the beginning, yeah. you know, it was what? I fucking leave. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here as quick as I could, dude. Hop in my car, go home, beat myself up a little bit, masturbate to porn all night, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you ever cry? Like, I've gone home and cried from nights out, like when I was first learning. Like, yeah. I cried because all these emotions come out of me. Yeah, not not a full on cry, but a whole lot of sadness for sure. Almost every time, even a bungalow for a while, just a whole lot of sadness and you know self uh, abuse. You know, yeah. yeah, a lot of that. That's how it was for me. Yeah, and I would. Uh, and then you have these m- nights where you seems like you can do no wrong, and you think that's going to be the new you. And then the next night you're back <laughs> there, and you're like, oh, last night I was I was a god. Tonight I'm. I'm shit. What's going on? Dude, and like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah, and that kind of. I got to watch the language now because YouTube's getting pickier with uh, age restriction and stuff oh, like okay. that. So, uh, so I'll, we got to watch that a little bit more. But uh, yeah. you got? Can you guys relate to that? <laughs> yeah, I feel that, Rajarshi. Um, and uh, so what we're going to talk about tonight is a lot about Anthony's perspectives, points of view uh, with dating and so forth. <laughs> with meeting girls, with flirting, because um, Anthony's come so far and his energy has just come up. He used to be really heavy and have a lot of apathy guys. And um, he's really shifted that a lot. And he's gonna be speaking at the Integrated Man Summit in Miami, yes. uh, three days straight, spoke last year. Nice. And again, that's my favorite um, favorite uh, event because all the coaches speak. I don't speak all week. I'll speak every day for like an hour, but they all speak for an hour every day too. And what they do is you get to pick a topic and they get to go deeper and deeper with that topic or different topics. And so they'll be talking to you at lunch break in the evenings. They'll be uh, getting to know you guys, what you guys want. So instead of being uh, inundated with 50 million speakers asking 50 uh, with 50 million topics, you get a few really good speakers that are entertaining that actually exciting to learn from and uh, they're going to go deeper and deeper with you each day. So you really get to take something home. Plus, most of yeah. the speakers are a part of Fearless. There's a few that aren't. And so they're going to go deeper with the principles around Fearless. Yes. Um, so Josh and yes. Anthony and, and so forth. And I'm going to talk to Eddie about coming. Dude, yeah. Um, All of us are going to go down similar, <clears throat> path, similar paths, you know, approaching it just from different angles. Mm-hmm. Or different paths approaching it from different, uh, you know, same, the same angle. Yeah, and that really yeah. helps you to, to take it home. Dude. And so this is going to be a live and a virtual event, guys, just so you know. Um, but if you do virtual live, the people that come out there live in, in uh, Miami are going to get some extra sessions just for them, uh, extra re- uh, revealing process sessions where I'll be doing some Dude. releases with them. Nice. And they're going to get uh, extra oh, yeah. time with us in the evening where they get to talk to each coach privately and Perfect. sit down with each coach. And we get to share all the deep stuff that we, mm-hmm. we can't always share online. Um, yeah. So there's a link to that. But let's get started. Um, uh Anthony really wanted to talk today, guys, about um, uh, uh, making it simple. Yeah, yeah, man. Is that how you said it? Making it simple? Uh, do, doing less. Doing, doing less. Doing less is, I like less that better, more, yeah. You know? Doing less. Less is more. Dude, like on this journey, man, and like where I'm at now, compared to where I started at, having to try so many different things, I'm just at a point right now where it's like, I understand what you always you used to always say, this. you used to always say, um, you, you, you got to get out your own way. <laughs> and that was probably the one, that was the one piece that I understood it, but it takes a, it takes time to actually embody it. You got to go through a couple of experiences to kind of see it. And so where I'm at now, as I'm noticing, I'm like, oh, getting women is really easy. I'm just noticing more and more. Like this past month of September, just so many girls I met, hung out with, had sex with. I'm just like, okay, I'm not doing. Yeah, anything. I noticed lately you've been really on a, a hot streak. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> it's like, a, like a dog in heater right now, pretty much. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's like, I'm not really doing anything, man. I'm just kind of chilling and more feeling than anything, honestly, in, in leading, but not even, not even consciously trying to lead. Like, oh, I got to make sure I lead this, do this right. It's more like, it's just in me now. Yeah. You know? So you're starting to become a natural. Do it 100%. Because people think that naturals are born and uh, natural is you're naturally designed to attract women. You're male and you're masculine. And so when you get all your beliefs out of the way, that natural ability kicks on. That's when you truly become a natural. Uh, that's what I believe, at least. And when I look at you guys out there, I, 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 that's what I see in each one of you as I see that potential. So uh, so that's really nice. Um, what, what do you think caused, 
because I've seen watched you grow over the four years, and I mm -hmm. and right now you're really hitting a stride, like more than ever. It seems like like I saw you the other night. I had a house party here at my place, and and uh, for my birthday, and and like you were here, and you met that girl within a few minutes. You guys, were like, let's go take a look, a look at the fountain. You were just flying, you were off, and then you were back talking to this girl, that girl. You were flowing mm -hmm. around the room beautifully. Dude. What what has been causing you to really kick up the game lately? You think? Congrats. the way you're being it's really your so i don't want to say game i'm gonna say your social skills mm -hmm. your natural innate masculine social skills your ability to be attractive without even hardly trying doing less yeah what's causing that to kick up so much lately congruency with myself yeah. is really feeling more and um I, can, I don't know man i've just been feeling a lot lately dude but also being more honest with myself and congruent with what i'm feeling so if i want to say something make sure i say it now like with the girl, for instance, at the, or she was out there hanging out by the fireplace. I was just like, cool, you want to see the fountain? Because we we're all chatting and she was chatting and the conversations were going all over the place. And I was just like, I just want to hang out with this girl on the solo. And I was like, look, you want to see a fountain? She was like, yeah. I was like, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> John was looking at me, the other guy was looking at me. I was like, <laughs> all she can say is no. <laughs> yeah. You, know, that's, you guys are terrified of asking a simple question. All the girl can say is no. Right? 100%. Bro. And I've gotten way more content with that. Like, I've gotten way, much, way better with being like, don't it out there. And if it doesn't land, then it just doesn't land. Yeah. That's all right. But how comfortable were you, were you with the question? And that's why it worked, right? Yeah. Because you were so comfortable and congruent, like you just said. Dude, where she could say is no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't. So you guys ended up walking out of the mountain. Yeah. Good um, talk. We'll see yeah. you soon on Saturday. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. He's, so you got, you got a date with her Saturday. Mm -hmm. She was really cute and really sweet. She's a sweet girl, man. Really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's go back to this idea of less is more. Um, what... Uh, okay, there was a, a, a guy I know many years ago. Um, uh, what was his name? Uh, back when I was first starting and I was training with Pickup 101 to be a coach, there was a guy, he owns uh, ApproachAnxiety.com. He owned the website. He, he said he was talking about, I think that's him. And he was talking about how in the beginning he would go out to talk to girls and I would have to say banter and humor and dance around. I'd say all this stuff. And he says, because of when I went up to say hi to girls, they didn't respond. So yeah. they started figuring out this banter and this, mm -hmm. like, say this and distract them here. And it was a lot of work. Yeah. And he says, now, years later, and he says, after years of doing this, I just walk up and say hi to girls now. Dude. And it works. Literally. So it goes from not working to all this work to, to the simple, going back to the original thing that didn't work, now it works. Yeah. What, what is that difference? What is that transition that happens right there? It's, it's almost like you're just, fucking on, excuse my French, because you're on YouTube untangling all those wires yeah you know because in your head you it's like you got to do this a certain way especially if you if you watched a lot of videos on youtube's about pickup community and all that stuff and you see all the stuff that they're doing part in your head feels like oh i need to do this to some degree or i need to overthink this to some degree but it's like you really don't after you get through all that clutter which i, I have to go through a lot of it because i was in a lot of pushing at a certain point because yeah. at first it just wasn't working it was too nice and then I did too much pushing i was pushing girls away and i was like I'm being nice. I'm not getting girls. I'm pushing. I'm not getting girls. <laughs> what yeah, the hell? None of it's working. Yeah. None, none of it's working, right? It, you know, and, and this is this is periods of it. Periods I do really well, and the periods of it were just like that. But in those periods where it wasn't working, there's still stuff in there. You got you got to be you got to be like, okay, what am I doing right now at this particular point in my life that's making it not work? Mm -hmm. And it's the pushing, the wanting, and all this stuff. We always talk about the wanting, wanting, needing, having yeah. to, got to, yeah, dude. And at some point, you have to look at that, whether you want to avoid it or not. And I was avoiding for a very long time. Um, and then you were, you were below one thing. You were down in the got to need to have to a lot, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's where it's like everybody gets stuck. Yeah. yeah. And then you start to come up and then all those wants are there. And so after the once, it's just kind of like, how, you know, how many times can you get rejected over text because you push too hard <laughs> because yeah. you're trying to see her on the same night instead of, instead of relaxing and conversing with her, letting it all kind of come to you naturally because you obviously got her number because she's interested to some, to some degree. Yeah. Now everything that you're doing now is just pushing her away. I just kind of relax. Be that, be that chill guy that she gave her number to. So give her something to chase. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know? So. Keep, uh, I think it's just another panelist. Is that coming in? Yeah, so continue on. So give it, So if you give her something to chase, now what do guys, a lot of these guys say out here, I talk to girls all the time, and I, if I relax, they don't do anything. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, so what is, what, is, what is the difference between what you're doing that's causing them to chase you versus the say the average nice guy who the girls are like okay i'll just be your friend yeah. you know i don't care we can just be friends 
and what is that difference that bridge yeah it's like it's a co it's a couple of things yeah. one thing is letting go of the attachment to the want first and foremost so a girl can tell if you're needy just by a single text the energy of it how it comes in what you how you say it you know if you're trying to meet up too soon all, all these kind of things kind of ring like red lights in her head i can feel it the other thing is um the other thing is uh, i lost train of thought right now what what is it that causes somebody to go from is what i was asking like like all these naturals will say yeah yeah get the uh don't chase just kick back and let them chase you but for a nice guy that doesn't work because he ends up in the friend zone yeah you just said something right after that that was kind of i was on that but i forgot what it was but um yes yeah, essentially it's almost like you're just you, freedom of outcome right uh, you, you're speaking you're having fun without the expectation of getting anything. I think that's a huge thing. And it, it's kind of an oxymoron because it's like, in your head, it's like, yeah, I got to make this work. You know, mm -hmm. da, da, da. But it's like, you kind of don't got to make it work. You got to let it work on its own. Because whatever you did to get to that point with that girl, it's probably already enough. And the rest of it's just being cool, talking to her, chill. Don't be this needy guy. You don't need to be. Yeah, flirt and be honest and be congruent with what you're feeling emotionally, for sure. Definitely do that. But when it comes to trying to get, trying to hang out, you know, you're not getting responses back and you're still kind of pushing, that doesn't work. So so now what you do instead, what you say something what you just told me is instead of when you're not getting the response you want. Back off. And then, but what do you do instead? You said you flirt and play? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I'll back off of that. I'll back off the asking. I'll just like, chill, whatever. Cool. I'll still flirt yeah. and hang out and talk. So what's, just give me some examples. Like somebody you talked to recently that you might have said or paraphrase what you kind of said or what you might have texted or mm -hmm. um, it's like, she's not biting. She's not coming forward, but she's not leaving. Yeah. For so sure. what do you do instead? And this is really important because I, I, I acknowledge this all the time. She's, she's not ready yet. She's still feeling you out. Oh, for so sure. she's asking a lot of questions to kind of figure out who you are yeah. and how you dance with that becomes really important. And what guys will do is just keep asking for the date, which then pushes her away instead of having fun with it for a little bit yeah, and, or asking for the date in the right way, like in a really commanding, powerful way and, and versus in a needy way. So continue on. How do you, how do you flirt? How do you keep that energy fl flowing when she's like still feeling you out? Yeah, that, that's cool. That, that one comes from um, not being affected when you don't, <laughs> you don't get the response you want when you ask her to hang out. Cause this is me, right? I would get, I would totally get affected when she's not replying to my text about hanging out, but she reply to everything else. Like, what the fuck is going on? Why is, she, why is she avoiding that question? And that was all the time. And I'm just like, okay, I don't get it. And so what I started to do is I was like, okay, just let it go. And so I just started talking about whatever random stuff, just starting to be my own natural, happy self, bringing her into that energy. And then a lot of times girls would just be like, you know, you might ask them later or they might even bring it up to hang out with you. What are you doing later? Right? Yeah. That happens a lot. This girl recently, I've been talking to this gorgeous Brazilian girl. I've been talking to her. And I could feel that because she was gorgeous. And I was like, all that neediness started to come up again. I was like, the hotter they are, the more neat the neediness starts to rise. And I could feel it coming up. I could feel it coming up. So I didn't, I didn't ask her right away to hang out because I remember the last time I talked to her, a little backstory on this. She worked at a Brazilian restaurant, met her on my birthday like two years ago, maybe, maybe a year ago. Got her number. And I was instantly trying to meet up with her. I was pushing way too hard. And she just like stopped talking to me after a day or two. She went flat line. And so I just let it go. I was like, whatever, it's done. And I saw her, her face in my, in my uh, text the other day. And this is probably a year or two years later. I text her, I say, hey, how you doing? And I wasn't expecting a response. And she totally opened right up again. And so we started chatting a little bit. And then she was telling me how she's, uh, she drives Uber, Uber and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. She's like, what do you do for a living? I was telling her I do coaching. She, I was like, yeah, what's that? And I was telling her about what we do, what we do with the models. She's like, oh, oh that sounds interesting. And I was like, hey, you should come down and check it out sometime. You know, you might, you might like what you see. Yeah. And so we're chatting back and forth, just kind of having a cool little chat. And at some point she called me. I thought it was random, but I always remember because we have this we have this conversation. So girls girls are always trying to feel you out. Like they want to feel you. They like even if the text is good, they kind of want to know for sure if that's the dude on the text. And so even I was in good energy. I answered it. We were on FaceTime. We're laughing because part of it was still kind of platonic in a way. Mm -hmm. And it sort of gave me a chance to flirt with her up front because I was like, I want her to know that. I still think she's as sexy as she was when I met her the first time. And so we hop on the call and she's like, you know, tell me about herself, what she's doing, she's in school, blah, blah, blah. And I started telling her about the, the fearless thing that we did. She's getting excited about it, loves it, loves what it sounds like. And then uh, we get into this conversation about her being a bad girl. Because I start flirting with her. And I was like, you're a bad girl, you're a bad girl. Someone tells me you're a bad girl. 
she started giggling. I was like, yeah, you're definitely a bad girl. I can tell by the way you're laughing. <laughs> she was like, yeah, I'm a bad girl. I was like, what percent of the time are you bad? What percent of the time are you good? She's like, 80% bad. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I thought so. So we kind, of, we kind of laughed it off for a little bit. It's just, I kind of let it go. I was like, cool, that was enough for rotation for me to know that there was still some interest there. And so we were planning to hang out, hop off the phone. And uh, now all of our texts are just super playful. Like ever since that call, it's just super playful. She's got this image of you now. And so everything is, remember guys, everything is going to be filtered off the image she has of you. So if she has an image of you as a nice guy, she's going to filter all your texts to that nice guy mm-hmm. image. She has, and so she got, she got a feel for him and she's projected this image onto him now. So his texts are going to be filtered through that current image she has of him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's a hundred percent. So last, she was supposed to come last night and uh, she had an interview. She had a, a at a restaurant, mm-hmm. really fancy restaurant too. And uh, part of me was like, okay, she, she's just going to come at 9.15. And uh, I had her from her side. I sent her a text and said, hey, you coming? Didn't hear anything. And so I was like, okay, maybe her interview went over. The old me would have been like, okay, she's avoiding me. She's not going to talk to me. I know where this is going already. Because, you know, you have those self-beliefs. But my self-beliefs shifted dramatically doing this work. And I was kind of like, okay, cool. Maybe she's having a long ass interview. Who knows? And so I just sent her a message. I was like, cool, you know, whatever. She hit me up in the morning, like maybe like midnight. She's like, hey, I'm so sorry. This is what happened. And it sounded... 100 percent legit yeah by the way the way I, I can tell you how many times that has happened to me Dude. where i'm like getting upset and then i finally and and i get really mad and i want to do something because they're like blowing me off and then i find out i was in a car accident this Dude. happened and they really do like you yes and uh over the years i've learned to stop all that you know just yeah. like eh, she'll call when she calls do and they do it's just like you're saying it's like why would they still be around at all yeah if, if there wasn't some kind of interest in there so my head knows that now and it's just kind of like Cool, cool. You know, mm-hmm. so I got the message. I messaged her back. I was like, "Cool." I said, "Hey, I totally get it." I was like, um, "Sounds like a fancy ass place," and uh, kind of kept it really cool. So she messaged me this morning when she woke up. She sent me a picture of her in this beautiful dress that she wore last night. She sent me a picture of the dinner that she was at. I was like, "Damn, you look good in that dress. I want to yeah. see you tonight in that dress." <laughs> she was like, Haha. "You could have saw me last night, but you were asleep or whatever." She said, and I was just like, "Well, you texted me really late, so yeah, you know." And I was like, "Okay, cool. So we'll probably see each other tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Who knows?" Yeah, so awesome. that polarity, that tension's being built, even even though it didn't work out, but you're still flirting. So more tension is now building, Dude. and it's just gonna be that much better when you guys see each other. Hundred percent. Soon as she walks in the house, it's over. And so, <laughs> <laughs> you hear the confidence in him, guys. You hear the confidence. Um, I want to see what some of the people. It's super true, though. Um, yeah, they just walk past. <laughs> Forget the friend zone. They just walk past. <laughs> Um, let's see here. My grief feeling a lot of uh, the, the true indifference to outcome. Yeah. So one of the things that Anthony is really good at, and I want to kind of discuss with you is you're very comfortable with sex, sexuality, intimacy, like just going right there when you first meet girls, whether it's online or in person, yeah, yeah. just saying stuff that's edgy. Mm-hmm. And, and can you talk to, for the guys out there, I don't know how many of you guys are comfortable with that, but for the guys out there, can you talk about what, what it, what that's like for you and how you got there like that process of getting comfortable with that kind of stuff because so many guys like how many of you guys have trouble um moving a conversation towards even like i want to kiss you right now or i'm gonna ki- I, I really want to kiss you right now there's something sexy about you, you have beautiful eyes versus just you have a beautiful like I, i'll see anthony he'll say something like oh, your ass is amazing in those in those sweat pants and those uh yoga pants his favorite yeah. thing in the world yeah. and he'll just go right there how many of you guys have trouble with that kind of stuff? <clears throat> All the time. Me. Okay. I have trouble. Yep. Uh, you're such a treat, Anthony, Jonathan said. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, it sounds like you and Jonathan need to go out together and date. Yeah, I'll hit you, uh, I'll hit you up later. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, so you talk about that, that, that journey, getting to that comfortable. Because in the beginning, you weren't comfortable with that, no. right? No, nah, man, I remember this. We're, I was in a three-month program with you. I don't remember if you remember this because it all kind of happened so fast. And uh, one of the assignments in the three-month program, you, you would give us an assignment a week and we would have a webinar every week. And one of those assignments was to go and be very direct with in your interactions, like tell a girl or, or insinuate sex or that she's sexy or something like that. And I was super shy and nervous to do that. And I remember going to Whole Foods one day and seeing this girl in yoga, in yoga pants and telling her she had a, her, her ass looked really sexy in those pants. And I remember my body just went numb after I said it because I didn't know what was coming next. <laughs> and she she lit up. <laughs> she started laughing because I was very direct. And I thought it was awesome. 
you know, I didn't get a number because I was still too shy to know what to do with that. But that kind of opened the door for everything. I was like, that was interesting. And over time, slowly, I started doing it more and more and, and saying it in different ways. But um, I, feel like, I feel like this, I feel like now it's at a point where it's almost like if you're not saying that stuff, you're, you're being dishonest. You know, it is, it is. 100%, yeah. you know, and it, cause I've seen a well, lot. how many guys go up and pretend to want to be the girl's boyfriend? They really don't. They just want to sleep with her and they won't yeah. tell her that. And the girl gets confused. The girl might have slept with him that day or the next day if he had just been honest. But because he put her into a boyfriend frame, she makes him wait two weeks, spend all his money. Yeah. And she's like, well, if you'd just been honest in the beginning, I would have known where you were coming from. Dude, 100%. There's plenty of girls that are fine with just having sex. Yeah. Yeah. And guys don't believe it. That's the problem. So many of you guys don't believe that these girls are a lot. There's a lot of girls out there that are like, I'm just uh, fine with it. You know, I, I'll do that. They, they, yeah, because they don't post it on, on, you know, a, a, every other post on what, uh, um, Tinder is like, uh, no, uh, no players, no this, mm -hmm. what there's, and that's a little different, you know, but in reality, there are plenty of women just looking to play, have fun. And so if that's who you are, go do that. If you're looking for a girlfriend, that's different than you got to then you want to put on that girlfriend, boyfriend energy, be honest with the women. It's so important. Yeah, for sure. So I was getting a little rambly there trying to get my point out, but it's true. that honesty will, will save you shit tons of headaches. So mm -hmm. excuse my language again, YouTube. Okay, go for it. Yeah, it's like, it's like a filtering thing, right? You filter out the girls who are not looking for that. But again, you got to be okay with the rejection that you're going to get from being a little more hardcore in what you say. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the, the cool part about it is when you actually do meet girls on the same in alignment with that, then that's your treat right there. Yeah. You, just, you got one. Yeah. And then they appreciate you. There's no hard feelings. There's no anger yeah. later. There's no, you lied to me. They have respect. You might be friends for years. Yep. You might play around and then not see each other for a long time and play around. Yep. And because they get that, they, they really respect that you're honest. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Have you read Radical Honesty? Dude, I'm literally listening to Radical Honesty in the car. I started it yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like in the first first segment chat. I don't know. He gets a little he goes a little off on the tangents and he's all over the place. It's terribly recorded. But I love to do I love to do his read it. <laughs> he just sounds like a sounds like a Texan kind of cowboy kind of guy. And he just doesn't yeah. give a fuck. Well he's the he's writer, yeah. And he just did he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> but it's the chapter on um anger. I think his chapter on anger uh, is okay. really good. That's farther into the book, but yeah, I think that's a that's a really good so because he does go off on these tangents all over the place and after a while you're like okay get back to the point yeah um but he said something about anger in there where he's like he was saying something like i heard him yesterday said he said uh how you can resolve you can resolve all this stuff in like 20 minutes that you would you probably been carrying your whole lifetime or resentment towards a person if you could just be honest and say you're angry with that person right in the yeah. moment have a moment with them and they say you know 20 minutes later you guys are laughing and having a good time yeah or be angry at them for the next 20 years Dude, yeah, I was like, dude. It down, yeah. Yeah. A, he does a, a really good example in the chapter on anger um, where he's teaching a couple how to argue yeah. and because they're scared to be angry at each other. So they just get bitter and they say little snide remarks and one says a side where their walls go up and they get more separate. Aggressive. Yeah, so they do get angry, but they just kind of shut down on each other. Dude. So he's sitting there and he's telling the, 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 the woman in, in, the, in the relationship, you know, be angry at him. What do you want to tell him? And she's like, well, you never listen to me. And then he's like, well, you, you never. And he's like, no, just let her say it. He's like, be more angry. If you need to cuss, cuss. Give me the, do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And you just listen. And he's coaching him how to listen. And so she finally gets all angry and yells. And then he goes, now it's your turn. You can yell. And he's teaching him not to take it personal. So what he was doing was really interesting. He was, instead of teaching him to be, let, I'm going to say, this is why it's bothering me. He was teaching him to get out their emotions. Yeah, it's raw. Be comfortable with it. And for you to listen and not take what she says personal or think it means something. Mm -hmm think her anger this is so powerful and then she, they went back and forth a few times and after two or three times of being able to like cuss and yell at each other get mad at each other and then look at each other they just started laughing yeah, exactly. and then they were like <laughs> hugging and then they were and then they were happy yeah. so they said this is so great they went and taught their parents how to do it Dude. and they did it with their parents and then they did it with, and they said it just started resolving years and years of trauma learning to just let somebody rant and get it out yeah. and not take it's the same thing we do in the workshops when we yeah, teach exactly. to have the women's come at you and you just learn to ground it you're like whatever not even that even in our company yeah. like we, we vibe those principles too very much with each other yeah so it makes 100 percent sense that it works dude yeah. it's what keeps everything it, it's what ties otherwise stuff builds man yeah, yeah. dude the party is not really being yourself if you're not doing that. You know what I mean? If you're having a problem with being 100% honest, like I was on a date with a girl the other day, 
Peter Farrell. I like this girl a lot. Was was talking to her about uh, I think sex came up, but it came up kind of early in the date, the second date, sex. And normally I would have been like, oh, don't don't bring that up, don't talk about this right now because she's gonna shut off on you or whatever the case. And I was just like, you know what? This is kind of who I am. If she can't handle that topic, do I really want to be hanging out with a girl who can't handle that topic at all, especially yeah. after the second date? You know what I mean? And so I went to the topic and started bringing up sex and we started talking about it. She was just open. And I was like, dude, so this girl can handle the topic. Yeah. And it's that's as ever. And that's who you want. So, so why wouldn't you do it? Yes. Like so many guys, and, and you guys tell me if this is true, you guys go out um with the intent to um it's like your job to impress the girl. Like, you probably used to have that. I used to have that. I'm the guy, my job is to impress her. If I don't impress her, I did something wrong. Your job is to go out and to decide if you like this girl and you want to go on another date with her. And if she can't handle who you're being when you're being your most real self, she's probably not a girl you want to date. So you should be cutting her loose and saying, you know what? If you can't handle the radical honesty, you're not the girl for me. I'm going to go find somebody else. That is powerful. And sexy as fuck to women. Dude, yeah. Because a lot of guys are probably like they were like I was with that, which is like you feel like you didn't have enough choice to be dismissing girls. <laughs> it's like yeah. I don't get enough girls so you want me to let this one go because she doesn't fit what I want. It's like hell no. Nah. <laughs> I want this girl for as long as possible. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you, you gotta you gotta give them the other side of it. You gotta be that other person. It's like be willing to let go of what's not serving you. You know, it's yeah. just dragging you down, it's not helping you grow. And as you start letting them go, what's what what what's magical that starts to do you notice anything? Yep, more come. Yeah. Better one comes, next one comes, better one. Yeah, more confident, more self-esteem, more powerful, more a girl that can handle yep. the honesty. And the girl that you probably said, you know, this isn't right for me, she probably starts chasing you later. Dude. Starts showing back up. She's like, you know, that guy was honest. You know, he yeah. was real. Dude, 100%. Yeah. So don't, get, don't get surprised if you get a text later from a girl who might have ghosted you it's because you're being too straightforward. Yeah. You know, it happens. Yeah, now, I got another question. This is really interesting because uh, uh, Roger Allen Curry talks about this and I really like his work. Um, his Mode One book is, is all about honesty, right? A lot of people think it's all about sex. No, it's about honesty. Mm. Um, of honesty about the fact that he, want, he wants, he likes just having sex, mm. right? And one of the things he talks about, and I find this to be super true, is you ever run into women where you, you're really honest with them and they're like, wow, that's forward, that's rude. And they kind of get mad at first. Mm -hmm. And then when the anger goes away, they get more attracted to you. Yes. No. yes or the or yes that 100 percent. or they'll say that and they'll kind of they'll say it in the way that it's supposed to shake you or make you snap back into place but when you don't all of a sudden that whole conversation just disappears and she's back to just talking to you like a regular person yeah but that but the fact that you did that in the first place she still knows that yeah. <laughs> that's still, that's still on the table mm -hmm. and all of a sudden sex happens from that yeah. Right. And it's, it's the weirdest thing. It's like they're getting turned on and then they're, uh, and they're fighting against their own turn on yeah. and they're yeah. fighting against their own rules and principles that society has taught them versus what's mm -hmm. actually they're feeling. And eventually they, they surrender and say, you know, I'm just going to let my feelings take over. And, mm -hmm. and it's really interesting. Um, I remember this happening with this girl in Bucharest. I started texting her and I started being really forward with her. Uh, while well, I was in Cal, I was in Nevada texting her, and then on my way to Bucharest, and she started responding, and she's like, "Well, you know, you're you're just too forward for me," and I'm like, "Okay." So I get to Bucharest, and she starts texting me again, and I'm like, "Well, let's meet up." So we went to uh, this coffee shop, and we're sitting in the coffee shop, and I'm talking to her, and I don't remember we brought back up the topic of the sex again, and I started to say stuff to her like a little forward, and she goes, "She goes, well, I'm not that kind of girl because I'm I'm religious," and she goes. So why are you talking to me like that? As she leans in. So why, why are you being naughty like that? Like, you know, I just had to meet you to see if you're really this way. And she's <laughs> leaning in. <laughs> and you can see her getting turned on. She's leaning in more and more. She liked it. She's yeah. smiling. And she's loving it. And so her subcommunication on one level is loving it. But her words are saying something different. So I'm looking at these two things until eventually she just lets go of the words. Dude. And she's just like you know ah fuck it i like it <laughs> dude that's 100 I, I gotta start teaching myself not to cuss on youtube anymore yeah so yeah. Hey, okay hey i get that that's hard <laughs> especially when you're so passionate about the topic it's just like yeah. it comes right out well know? i like to just speak freely you know radical honesty so dude, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's funny it's funny what girls say sometimes you know people say don't listen to what girls say to a certain degree, definitely listen to what girls say. Oh, yeah. You know, I would tell her, I'm like, if a girl says, you know, don't move forward, don't kiss me, I'm not going to kiss her. Yeah, but for I'm, sure. But I'm going to be right there with her. I'm going to see where she's at. And 
we're going to dance and if she and she may change her mind in 10 minutes she, she may change sure. her mind in an hour she may change but i'm, I'm you know you gotta yeah there's a there's a balance with all this stuff yeah i like that and they do change their mind in 10 minutes and they'll say some things that might have contradicted what they said earlier mm-hmm. and that's how you know it's just like okay something's shifting there yeah and i'm not doing it through force they're not changing their mind because i'm forcing them they're changing oh. their mind because i'm respecting their boundaries but at the same time keeping the tension alive the play alive right at the level that they like dude and and some guys will try to force it and it's like and that and they can even get away with forcing it but then the girl regrets it later no 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 No, you want to dance with her you want to play with her you want to have make sure she's having fun and i I don't know where where you're at with this but this has been a really as i get older and more mature i care less and less about sex right i love sex more than i ever have but I care less and less about getting the sex with a girl. When you're a young man, you want to get the sex, right? This is cool. But as you're older, you start to care more and more about just having fun with a woman. Dude. Intimacy. Intimate, it might just be about making out. It might be about dancing. It might be about dancing close. And, yeah. and it might be about some nights I don't even want to. This is nights I don't even want to have sex, Dude. but she does. And yeah. I'm like, but I do want to like do intimate things with her. And so yeah, I'll play yeah. with that. And when you honor all of that and dance with all that and are super radically honest about all that, everybody is happier. Dude, 100%. Yeah. I totally agree with that. And I noticed that for sure with this girl I was talking about at the restaurant, talking about sex with the nice Argentinian restaurant I went to. Yeah, even with her, it's just like, there's there's not this push for sex. It's not like, I got to get it. Like, it used to be like, I'm on dates. It's like, cool. You know, da 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 And then it has, to be, it has to end in sex somehow, some way. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, 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 enough of that over time i don't know if you get bored of it or you've probably had enough sex where you're just kind of like it's not even that important you start getting picky right yeah that's you true start, too. you know for in the beginning you know, whoever wants to have sex with me and later you're like no no i don't yeah. have sex with you i don't have sex with you, you start to get picky right and it's almost like when you're hanging out with these girls now you're not looking for sex just the conversation the hanging out it nourishes you it feeds yeah. you differently yeah. you know what i mean it's like yeah i'm sure sex is going to come from this as a natural byproduct it just, it's just going to happen that way, but I do actually enjoy this girl. Like she's, that's she's it, dope. hundred percent. Yeah. 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 It's not about that dude. That's, that's definitely a maturity thing. And I fight it because I'm like, eh, am I being too indifferent to outcome right now? <laughs> am I too, <laughs> too indifferent to outcome? Yeah. But you know, it is what it is. Cause but you, if you're happy, that's all. And, and you're inviting her into this world where you're happy and to I'm inviting her to go on a ride with you. That's, that's what counts, right? Dude, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And they love the ride, man. I, and I love, I love leading that ride. Yeah. That, that's fun. At the end of the night, you know, she's sending you these texts before she goes to bed, or she calls you before she goes to bed, or she made it home safe, but she's still talking. Yeah, it's just like cool. <laughs> so, so let's let's uh, let's go back to the original topic, making it simple. Yeah. What allows a man? And uh, and we're gonna go to questions in a little bit here, guys. Um, I know that we're we're, 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 we're let's finish really quick. This is awesome. And now, oh, yeah, you can push. You're not gonna enjoy. It. Okay, cool. You guys getting value out of this? Just uh, pop in there. Let Anthony know uh, if you're enjoying this. You're getting value from some of the stuff he's talking about. Um, we got 48 guys on here right now. Nice. Takes them a minute to respond. They have to get to their keyboards. And, okay, right. awesome. Good, good, good. So we're going to have a conversation with you guys in a little bit. We're going to get to questions. But uh, really quick, I want to get back to this original topic. Uh, since, see, doesn't it feel good to see that? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. All hands uh, on deck. Um, so let's get back to this original topic of making it simple. Mm-hmm. What allows you, what are you, what are these guys that I'm talking about this guy out here that's like, that's just learning. What does he have to cultivate so that he can do less and less and less and just have girls like him? This is going to sound cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> self-love, <laughs> self-love, self-contentment. Okay. Like you got, you got to be able to sit at the table with a girl and not need to say anything to make a conversation go a certain way, <clears throat> to, to not need to, do anything specific to get a certain outcome. Like you gotta just be able to sit there and be like, oh, she doesn't like me because I'm too chill, too relaxed. That's cool too. Mm-hmm. She can leave. But yeah. it never happens that way. Like if I have a girl stuff and like, you're so chill, you're so relaxed. So yeah, yeah. So it's just in my body, enjoying my body, you know what I mean? I so what you're saying is that these guys typically, when they're beginning, <laughs> are you or me or when yeah. we were beginning, we're, we're up in our get. head, we're nervous, we're reactive, and we're trying to, hey, what do you need? What do you like? Yeah, and that's get. what's ruining it. And when you do less, you're just sitting in your spine, relaxing your back. Dude, you're like, yes. hey, what's up? Dude, they want to know all about you. They ask yeah. me all these questions. They're in, you're driving, and she's in the passenger seat asking me all these questions because I'm just chilling, enjoying the drive. Like, I'm enjoying her being there for sure. I'm yeah. in there, I'm walking with her. 
I'm just like interviews, interviews going on. <laughs> I'm just these questions. I'm just driving. I'm like, cool. She's pretty, she's really into me. And, and so how does, uh, how do you use, like, I always say silence doesn't work when you're a nervous guy. Cause no, it's, uh, cause silence is nervous. So like you're afraid, but when you get really solid and relaxed, like in your car, yeah. you can use silence to be attractive. Yeah, you can sure. sit there and not say something for 10, 20, 30 seconds and just enjoy the moment and that'll pull her towards you like a magnet. You ever do that? Do it hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like what we teach in the week long, right? Which is, can you actually, it's energetic, right? Like she's there with you guys are definitely there together. She can still feel you there with her. You didn't completely disconnect and go off into your own world. Yeah. Like you guys are in the car together. You guys are still sharing a connection, whether or not you're saying anything. She can feel that. And that's what makes her keep coming, coming back yeah. towards you. It's like, cool. She knows I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super yeah. true. And she knows it. She can feel it. She loves it. She loves dancing for you. And that's that's actually in nature. You see that the water dances for the riverbed. Yeah. The, the leaves are dancing off the tree. And you'll see that uh, that most guys are doing too much dancing and not enough relaxing. Yeah. Man. Um, yeah. So we're, uh, I just finished an ebook. It's, um, we haven't decided on the title yet, but it's basically going to be, it's about the qualities that make a man attractive. It's not a how-to book. Uh, just so you guys know, it's, it's not a, uh, it might be a, we might print it, but it's, um, it's, it's the qualities, like the grounding, the tension and, and the, how to develop each one of these qualities that make a man like what you're talking about. And if you want to go learn the how-to, there's a million people on walk up to her and say this, talk to her like this, listen oh, like course. this, that that's secondary. This is who you're being in your body while you're doing that or under the surface, or even when you're just sitting in the car, just relaxing and the stillness. Mm -hmm. and how to develop that and that's the stuff that you're really alluding to as those like tension containing leading grounding Dude. you know yeah. uh turn on mm -hmm. relaxing into your turn on and it's all about relaxing into and feeling these energies can you talk a little bit about that yeah, we yeah. talk a lot about it in the week longs and stuff like that mm -hmm. but i've never written a book specifically on this so yeah that's uh, that's just getting comfortable with tension all of that is getting comfortable with tension right I mean, the being able to sit still and be in your own body without having to feel like you have to spike them to your head and just kind of enjoying your own self in front of people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Leading, detaining, being able to look at her in the eye, stand right across from her, ground yourself, be in your body, not lose yourself and go up into your head, come out of your body, get all fanatical, just really being there and be present. You know what I mean? When you contain her and you can see all that information coming in from her, like that's what I literally mean by do less to ground yourself and just look at her and talk to her let everything all the information come through through the eyes and just feel because it'll give you everything that you need to know like you want to know girl, if a girl's turned on by you just pause and talk to her look at her in the eyes yeah does she connect with you does she in there with you what information is she giving you what kind of subtle cues are she giving you all this stuff you can't see if you are not good with tension because all that's tension at first but over time it's like yes yeah, tension but that tension automatically instead of being tension scared 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 it's like tension attraction like immediately turns into attraction right well, tension becomes fun at a certain point Dude, and then inside the tension is what like the tension relaxes at first it's too much tension but if you learn to relax the tension what's inside of it yeah and then there's all this emotion vulnerability feeling depth of feeling and that's where all the the information exact tells you exactly what to do comes Dude, from yes. it's like a live wire the wires the tension and the elect and the lot and the electricity running through the wire is all the feeling, the vulnerability, the mm -hmm. emotion. You get that balance just right. You're actually balancing the feminine, the, the communication, the feminine, the masculine. Yeah. Like us just talking and feeling together. We're, we got the balance between the tension and the feeling. Ooh. And we enjoy it. We relax into it. You do that with a woman, she loves it. Yeah. And you just relax a little bit more into your masculine, let her be a little more feminine. And then that, that little polarity starts, right? Where she starts going up and you start going down. Dude, in the yeah. Energy. Hell yeah. And it feels really good. Dude, we used to get this question a lot, and I think a lot of guys are not asking this question because they're starting, they're starting to get that more. But they used to be like, what do, what do I say? What do I say? And it's like, just be still, look, yeah. and enjoy, and it'll tell you everything you need to know. If you, your curiosity will spike. You want to have certain questions that you didn't even think you had, but now that you're looking at her and you get less information, it's like, yeah, so tell me about this. What's up with this? Yeah, the more you get it, the more you'll enjoy just saying the most random shit sometimes. Dude, yes. You know. Um, you don't want to fill out a place. No, and you'll be sitting here. Like I, I keep thinking about the other day, I was <laughs> I, I was hanging out with this girl that I, I hang out with sometimes, and we were over here and we cooked a bunch. I mostly am carnivore, but occasionally I'll have potatoes and things mm -hmm. like that. And we cooked all these potatoes, and I, they were so good. She's such an amazing cook, right? It's just like cookbook, just, just 
delicious plate of potatoes and I had the whole pan. I'm holding the pan. I'm eating the potato. I love these potatoes, baby. <laughs> baby, these potatoes are so fucking sick. I'm walking around the house with them everywhere I go. I got the whole pan. She's just laughing at me and I'm like in my underwear walking around with potatoes and eating yeah. them. And, and I'm like, potatoes are fucking delicious. Oh my God, what'd you do to these fucking yeah. potatoes? And then she's just giggling and laughing the whole time. I'm not yeah. saying anything special, Sweet right? Damn it. And she's just loving it more and more. She still talks about that because she thinks it was so funny <laughs> how I was like having an orgasm over these stupid potatoes. And, yeah. and but I played with it and, it and I didn't say anything special. I didn't say anything deep. I was just laughing and having fun and enjoying something she created. Dude. And it made her really happy. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you're probably just still coming. You're there with her still. And you probably really were enjoying those potatoes. Yeah. You know, you're just fucking like, you're really enjoying them. Like, pfft. Yeah, and she would try to talk about other things. I go, no, no, let's sell these potatoes. Let's come back to these potatoes. Like she's just laughing. And she, you know, and then we were just having a good time. And um, part of it was I, was I wasn't worried about how she was going to respond to me at all. Yeah. I know. I was having fun in my body. You can join me. And I, I like you too. Come join me. Let's have fun together and laugh together. That's that congruence thing I was talking about. Like when yeah. you're congruent in your body, it's just like, what's, what's going on in here is the truth. Uh, and that's all the that's all i need to to express is the truth it's it yeah you know because if, if you're if you're what what outside of that needs to be expressed other than what yeah. you're feeling at all at any given time well as dan Perrione used to say honesty is an aphrodisiac Dude. and uh it's, it's it. so true. radical honesty is an aphrodisiac when you are brutally honest and real with people and without becoming a dick about it without forcing your your point you know just honest in a relaxed open-hearted sort of way people will be magnetically drawn to you right mm -hmm. and it's amazing yeah and so it's true it's very true yeah and very so true. stuff happens so yeah. so guys um let me check your your comments really quick i think we're going to get to some questions um I find that part better. So I'm not sure what you're referring to there, but awesome, Sam. It's you actually getting value. Um, enjoy the women. How do you mean by what? Uh, enjoying the women. How do you mean? Literally enjoying them, just looking right at them, mm -hmm. just like opening your heart and dropping into your turn on and letting her be feminine for you and let her dance for you and flow for you and entertain you. And it's so, it's and just enjoy, like you would a flower or art or, anything that, that's fun um yeah my question to that would be how much are you actually looking at them in the eye and being present yeah. with them? if you're not enjoying them then there's some there's a block there because you, you should automatically be enjoying them yeah it's not hard to enjoy a beautiful woman mm -hmm. if you really like them if you don't like them you need to work that out if you've got anger issues with women you got to work that out how are you supposed to enjoy a woman it's a huge one yeah that's a huge one it's big time um okay let's move to questions really quick and uh we've got 18 questions here i don't know if we'll get through all of them Hey, Jonathan, uh, uh, do you have any questions that stand out that relate to the topic that you want to ask us? You want to, you want to pop out or, um, actually we'll start with this first one cause you brought it up and he wrote it before you brought it up. But since it relates to what you brought up, how do you practice self-love? Yeah, man. <clears throat> Again, the, the self-love is, it's really being content with yourself, no matter what, no matter who's in the vicinity, how do you feel about yourself? You know what I mean? And it's very telling when you think about that. You know, if you're trying to adjust yourself, let's say, for instance, you're in a room with people and you feel insecure and then you sit a certain way or you dress a certain way specifically around a certain group because you don't want to be seen a certain way. It just kind of tells you that there's something in there that you, you're not content with. And ideally, you need to be able to sit at a table with a group of people, maybe 20 people or so, and be in your body and just be cool with who you are. Yeah. Like, cool who you are. Don't try to adjust. Don't try to make changes. Don't try to do this and that to please anybody else. Just feel yourself and be okay with what you're feeling, whether it's negative or positive. So you can actually reach a point where you're loving yourself, even when you're feeling insecure. Do a hundred percent. And that's, that's the realization everybody's got to have. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. And did you, do you remember having that, that point where that happened where that first time? And then you were like, this is interesting. I'm actually mm -hmm. angry, but I like, I still love myself or I'm actually sad, but I still love myself. Yeah. I had some bad blips, blips, blips. <laughs> and then now it's more smooth. <laughs> I remember first coming up the, coming out of the, um, my first experience workshop, every lunch break, I would go out and I would sit on this little ledge and I would ground my feet out. And, um, I, would, I used to just kind of get very insecure sitting out there because coworkers walking by left and right. And I was like, no, I look fucking weird out here. And then um, after doing that for a while, I just started to kind of just get kind of content with, with being that guy who yeah, sat there and yeah. did that. It was kind of weird. But 
I noticed the emotions after like freaking out for a little bit. They just calmed down. I was like, okay, that's interesting. It's a small little blip there. And then uh, maybe about a year ago, I was doing more just feeling my emotions, feeling the heaviness and stuff. Because we had a chat about this, like coming out of the apathy, you're starting to feel a lot more of what you don't want to feel. You're starting to feel more of the sadness, starting to feel more of the fear, it starts to amplify. Um, all this other stuff starts to come up, anger especially. And so I would sit through the anger and I would sit through the sadness and the grief or whatever it was. It was kind of just mellow. It's just kind of like, oh, fuck, I suck. I hate being sad. I want to be sad right now. All the thoughts in your head, like, I suck. Oh, you know, negative stuff thinking. And then all of a sudden it just subsides. But you're still feeling it, but it kind of just turns into this mellow buzz versus being like, all these thoughts are just going really loud, this, this, this. And it's just like, yeah, okay, I'm sad. Not a big deal. It's more like watching a sad movie and saying, wow, this is mm-hmm. sad. Like when we saw Hostiles, uh, yeah. Hostiles, mm-hmm. uh, not the, uh, the, the Hostiles with uh, the Western. Um, it was really sad, but we really enjoyed it. it was, we got a, it was like I bought a deep feeling. I remember and you saw that. We were shocked at how much grief and sadness was in it. Yeah, for sure, man. And you start to look at your own life that way. It's like, yeah, I'm sad. Yeah. You walk up to a girl and you start talking to her you're on a date. And you're like, yeah, I'm sad today. Dude, yeah. And you own it. She'd be like, what? You Dude. know? Hundred percent. But if you're needy and sad, I'm sad. Chick repellent. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, that's a good, another good point. A great, a great way to get past the neediness around that sadness is to know that if you sit in that sadness for a little bit, it's going to mellow out. It's going yeah. to chill out. So don't go, don't go crazy just because you're feeling sad. Feel sad. Be okay. It's going to come like this. You're going to hit a point where it's like, I'm sad. I'm sad. You have any thoughts? Da, 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 da. And then once the sadness comes down, you're like, Oh, I'm sad, but I can still talk to people right now. Yeah. I feel sad, but I can, still, I can actually still go hang out with a group of friends if I wanted to and be sad. It doesn't feel like that overwhelming anymore, you know? Yeah, because you're, you're detaching. You're not identified with the sadness anymore. It's not you. It's an experience you're having. And when you're identified with it, you think it's you and it means something about your Dude, life. Yeah. 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 Remember yesterday when I came to help with the table, you're like, uh, you asked you said I was feeling kind of heavy. I was like, yeah, I was feeling kind of heavy, but I was just like, I, I was just kind of welcoming it. I was good with it. Well, funny part, I said that, and then within five minutes, you were like, lightest. You were light again. Yeah. And that's not, that's unlike the old version of you. Oh, the old version of you would be stuck all day. Mm-hmm. The new version of you is like, yeah, no big deal. Yeah. And it was really neat to see that, see that, that big, uh, that, that transition. Dude, yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah. You, you, this is what I realized. You waste more time when you're reactive to those emotions because you're, you're distracting, you're doing, you're doing things that you, you're doing things just to distract and not feel the emotion when you could just be getting work done. And feeling those emotions at the same time, you get so much more work done feeling your sadness and letting it pass than you would trying to get up and go out and do something else or try to eat to distract it or try to answer and distract it. Like I'll be sad at home and I'm just okay, cool. Reach yeah. out to this client, reach out to this client, and it just moves smoothly. Next thing you know, you got a whole day's work done. It's like a cloudy day, and I can enjoy the cloudy day. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll stay inside and read today. Whatever, dude. Yes, yeah. that's really good realization. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, let's continue on. Uh, I'm... Oh, this is an interesting one. I like this next one from Clint. Uh, I'll read it out for you guys. You can see it clearly. Uh, I'm attracting women, but they are drunk or not high caliber. What do you think is going on here? Um, and high caliber, I don't think any, uh, these are weird statements, not high caliber. Mm-hmm. So when I hear stuff like that, I, I agree with you. Nobody's not high caliber people just have low self-esteem and high self-esteem are more confident. And so when you, when you, uh, when that happens and a woman is not high caliber, it means it, what you're probably doing is attracting women that haven't worked out their self-esteem issues, right? Yep. She could easily become high caliber. Yep. So for anybody that's listening to this, anybody become, can become high caliber. And, and if they actually start identifying with their best self. So, uh, so if you're attracting women that are, that have these problems, what's going on? Yeah, it's it's your it's your self esteem. Yeah, you know if you're accepting these women into your life, then that's your self esteem. If you have an issue with letting these kind of girls go, then that's very telling too. Like there was a point where I was looking at girls who were drunk, and it was just like I, didn't, I knew personally I wasn't into those kind of girls. I was like I don't like girls who are drunk because like, it makes me feel like okay, you got to be drunk to have sex with me. That doesn't feel good. And then it came to a point where I had to be like, I had to start telling the girls that like, hey, I don't I don't want you to come drunk next time. Oh, it makes me because it makes me feel like this. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, I wouldn't get fight. I wouldn't get any pushback. Sometimes I wouldn't get a message back, <laughs> <laughs> and they were gone. Yeah, but it, for me internally, it was scary because it was like, oh, it's a potential for abandonment if I say that. If I say that, she's gonna fuck. She's gonna she's gonna disappear on me. And um, yeah, I told a couple girls that you know, and 
I'm trying to think, did any of them ever come over sober the next time? And I don't, I don't have any uh, particular memory of, of somebody coming over sober after, but I do know, I do remember where I just stopped attracting girls like that period. Yeah. And all my sex was sober from there on out. Yeah. Cause you, you cut them out. You, you told to. the universe, no, nah, I don't want this anymore. And you told your subconscious mind. Yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. That's how I got rid of a uh, highly codependent, abusive women. I used to get really abusive women in my life, like uh, kind of um, narcissistic. They would be really always wanting to fight. And that mm -hmm. probably came from my childhood. Um, and one day I realized it. I woke up, same thing. I was like sitting there with this girl I've been with for a while. And I was like, what, what am I doing? Dude. And I said, I just got to end this and like shut the door on it. That's how I thought of it and slam the door and not see her anymore and tell, tell my subconscious mind, I'm not accepting that in my life anymore. Yeah. And I did it with her, which was hard because it, it felt like I was ripping off my arm. Dude, it hurts. It. Yeah. It hurts. But she, that woman, that type of woman never showed up again. Dude. Yeah. See? But if you if you drag it out and mm -hmm. break up, kind of break up, no, don't slam the door and kind of, you keep, you, you'll replace her with somebody else that's like her. Dude. And that's, yep. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I literally just did that <laughs> with something that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about it here, but yeah, I, you, I can literally see how that exactly plays out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, man. So all my girls at this point, they, they barely drink wine. <laughs> That's good. Cool. Good, good, good. Um, okay. Uh, okay. This is a good one. Uh, Sam, can you give tips on achieving indifference to outcome, freedom from outcome? All was another way we say it without blocking the emotions. Uh, this is a really important question. Actually, great question, Sam. I am much better now with indifference to outcome, but sometimes I'm, I'm uh, afraid to block my emotions because I did it many times before. So that's not indifference to outcome, that's indifference. If you block and shut down all your emotions, you're becoming indifferent. And what you're talking about is indifference to outcome where you can still feel everything. Um, so you wanna, you wanna comment on that? Yeah, so, right, just about the very nature of shutting down your emotions and not feeling your emotions, that's not being free from outcome or indifference to outcome. And Brian likes to say it like this, you always say it's, it's more freedom of outcome than it is actually indifference to outcome. Because indifference is I don't care. Freedom is just like, I feel everything and it sucks, sure, but it, it's okay. Yeah. You're not becoming a victim to the emotion of whatever it is that hurt you potentially. If a girl doesn't want to, she rejects you, she doesn't want to hang out with you. It's just like, okay, cool, not a big deal. That was okay. At least I'm looking for it. It goes back to what you said before. She may, in indifference outcome, uh, it may make you sad, yeah. but I can handle my sadness and I'm okay with it. So yeah. I'm a man, I can handle my emotions. Dude. So I'll be sad. Goodbye. Yes. And I'll be sad. I'll get over it and I'll heal from it and we'll move on. Dude. Yeah. I sent a message out to somebody the other day and I had some of that come up. It's a little attached to outcome. And then it hit me and said, Oh, you said it? it doesn't work out though you want it. You're just going to be sad for about 10, 15 minutes. That's okay. Cause mm -hmm. I've been doing that the, for like the past couple of weeks. And I was like, yeah, 10, 15 minutes of being sad. I survived it this whole week. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big deal. So now I can say whatever I want to say because I just know the outfall is just going to be 15, 10 minutes of sadness. That is, that's a perfect, that's a perfect analogy with what um, um, John Stevenson used to say, the, the, the three feet foot tall guy in the wheelchair. Uh, his mom, huh? Yeah. yeah. He's, he, he had this story. He, he, um, he got really upset at Halloween. He's three feet tall in a wheelchair. He used to be passed away, but he said Halloween was his favorite holiday of the year because he, he didn't feel like a freak on Halloween. He could go out and be with everybody else. And he was, he had brittle bone disorder. So he'd break bones real easy. And so he decided to go out and or he was going to, he was getting ready for Halloween. He was laying on the floor because he can't walk and he rolled over hmm. and he bumped his leg on the bed and That's right. cracked a bone and he couldn't go out and he had to stay in for Halloween. He was super upset. And his mom came into the bedroom and looked at how upset he was and how he was like being a victim and his poor me and, and this guy has every reason to be a victim, you know, with his brittle bone disorder and being three feet tall in a wheelchair. And she, she, he said, this was the most valuable lesson, one of the most valuable lessons that changed his whole life, uh, the trajectory of his life and why he became so freaking successful in his life. Is she said, okay, if you really want to be sad and upset and you want to feel sorry for yourself, you can do it. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes and I'm going to leave the room. You be as sad, upset, and feel like a victim as much as you want for 15 minutes. When the 15 minutes is over, get over it because you got a lot, you know, you got a life to live. You're not going to be a victim your whole life. You're not going to play the victim. She didn't want her son who was in a wheelchair to have an excuse to play the victim this whole life. Smart woman. And now what ended up happening, he said that was the most empowering. He said, left me in that room to really be the victim, to be conscious of it. And that was super powerful. From that point forward, what did you do? 
he went out and he became, uh, he started to work for, he, he worked in the White House for the president. He had a TV show. He had some best-selling books. He spoke around the world. He married a beautiful woman. He, it's crazy. you know, he, he, uh, he did all these amazing things because he didn't play the victim. He went for it. Yeah. He went for it, dude. Because yeah. you know, he, he can handle the stuff after. Yeah. It's powerful. <laughs> it's super powerful. And it's exactly what he said. I can handle it for 15 minutes. Let me fully yeah. feel it. Well, I'm going to welcome this sadness. Just that's what releasing is. I'm revealing it. I'm going to welcome this pain for 15 minutes and I'm going to show, prove to myself I can handle it. I can yeah. be with this emotion. Yep. And I literally had that one yesterday as I was sitting in the car on the side of the road. I was like, it's cool. It's 10 minutes of sadness. I can handle it. Yeah. You know? Just beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. That's where you become powerfully grounding because you start to ground all those emotions. And yeah. You start to, yeah. Good. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, okay, awesome. Thank you, Sam. That was a great question. Uh, Galaxy JS or J6. <laughs> I want to ask Brian if his opinion on positivity is connected with or is connected. Oh, with will. Uh, okay. I want to ask Brian if his opinion on positivity is connected with will or integration. Uh, I don't get that sentence. And second, do you get that sentence? Is he talking about like willpower? <clears throat> if you're uh, ask his opinion on positivity is connected oh, okay. yeah, with not... will or integration. Oh yeah. Maybe it's willpower with will or integration. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm going to go to your second question and I'll think I'll let that one set in my mind. And second, what, what uh, do the demonic thoughts, if they start making damage to me, okay. which one technique will you use to dismantle the thoughts? So they bought, so if you have negative thoughts, just, that's what he's using demonic for negative um, thoughts so they can bother me on the third. How do you, how does penetration look like? Uh, so I'm going to answer one of these. If I have negative thoughts, mm -hmm. um, the first thing I want to do is observe them and be with them. That's exactly what we we're just talking about. We'll sit with them for like, like you talked about, if I have those negative thoughts, there's also going to be an emotion attached to them. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're going to have to identify the emotion and then get comfortable realizing you can handle it. You can look right at it. But yeah. And so that's the first step is to disidentify with it and realize it's not you. It's something outside of you that you're buying into. Mm -hmm. The second step is once you've created that disassociation, you can start to let it go a little bit, start to start to process out some of it, some more and some more. And that's the revealing process. That's what that whole course and revealing masterclass is about. And it teaches you how to do that. And did you want to add to that? Say anything? Um, is, I want to see if this guy's on the call. Cause there's a guy who just asked me that. And I know he's a regular on this call. I don't see him on there. Okay. Uh, he just asked me that in, in the in Facebook message. And, uh, no, you, you're 100% right, man. It takes a Well, his name there is, he's using the name Galaxy. So that might be, we don't know what his real name is. Okay. I don't, I don't know if that's her at all. I'm thinking it's, it might be her at all. He's a cool guy. Okay. But he had a similar question to that. And it's just like you're saying, man, you, it, it takes a bit of practice to learn how to not associate with those emotions, those thoughts and those emotions, because it may feel like it's you for a very long time. And the more you start to see how quickly it subsides when you just sit with it, you just realize it can't be you. It's just like a cloud in the sky passing. That's yeah. all it is. So let let the demonic thoughts and let the let all that stuff just pass. Let yeah. it go. I that's how you really agree. It's just you got to get you got to get good at disidentification so they can pass. And that is the that's the only skill. Every technique is trying to disidentify and then so you can let stuff go. Yeah. And that's the biggest part. Uh, Sean, let's go to Sean. Um, uh, yeah, the revealing course just got put into the links for anybody that's interested in that. Uh, got put in the links. So you can check that out, guys. Uh, How in the world do you get that smile? <laughs> Have you always had it? He's talking to you, bud. That's uh, he's always, we've always teased him about that smile, Sean. Yeah. And he does that little, uh, uh, it's a little innocence, like almost innocent, little yeah, yeah, yeah. embarrassed, but it, you own it kind of smile. I don't scare. <laughs> <laughs> can you say? Yeah. Yeah. It's one of you. It's part of your charm, buddy. It's part of your charm. Yeah. So how do you get it? You know where it came from? Probably anxiety. <laughs> your <laughs> anxiety, and you're just owning it. Yeah, yeah. letting people. He's letting yeah, people true. see it on his face, his yeah. embarrassment, and he's owning it. So there you go, man. He is to get really anxious. Yeah, and then let people see it and own it. Yeah, I'm nervous. I'm scared. Yeah, so what? Here it is. Yeah, Anthony being Anthony, which Archie said. Yeah, man. Uh, fully enjoying it, I guess. Ha, oh, that's awesome. Um, that's really good. So, um, okay, Chris. Hey, Chris, buddy. What's up? Yeah, what's going on, dude? Um, hopefully you're feeling more of your back today. We were working on that yesterday. 
Uh, do you find the more you uh, you simplify things, such as goals and uh, daily tasks, that the that the want to should uh, do have to tends to fade? So the more you simplify things, such as goals, do you find that that want to category of emotions or, or or of action starts to fade, and you move more into choice and more into cap uh, on of the process and even the main goal starts to move higher up the emotional scale. You should move more into cap of the process. So yeah, the more he's saying the, the uh, yeah, so I'm just kind of breaking it down a little bit. So you find the more that you find, you simplify things such as goals and daily tasks. So getting more simplistic, like you like to do, making it simple mm -hmm. that the want to, so that all the wants and the uh, that I want to, have to, need to all starts to fade. So do you find that that stuff fades? That's interesting. In, in terms of task, I can't say that I've had a whole lot of experience in that. Um, do you ever have the experience of having to do a task, needing to do a task? Yeah, I got to get sure. this done. Do you mm -hmm. ever work on releasing the have tos and then you twos yeah, on a task? I was, I was literally about to say that. That's what I do. Like I'll sit with that. Like if it's anger, I'm like frustrated, like oh, I got a lot of stuff to do right now. I don't want to do this. I just be very honest about I don't want to do this right now. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, why do you don't, why don't you want to do this? And there's always something attached to it. Like, oh, it's because of this, and or it's because of a thought. And then you just kind of let the emotion go and you sit with it for a little bit, like I was saying about the sadness and the same thing, it just kind of fades and you start to be able to function. Maybe you don't release all the sadness or the anger towards it or frustration, but you release enough of it where you can still get work done. Yeah. You know? And so as you release the have to, which then helps to release the anger naturally, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you find you move up the scale naturally. Yeah. And then your tasks start to become more fun. You yeah. start to find a little bit of passion in it as yeah. you're doing it. Yeah, and suddenly you didn't want to do the dishes, and now you're like, "Hey, dishes are kind of interesting. I'm playing with the bubbles. Yeah. I don't know, you know." It's... Got some music going down in the background, and you, yeah. have, you, have, you actually turn it into something that you enjoy. Yeah, I did a whole talk on this yesterday yeah. with the with Chris and his group, or one of the groups uh, yesterday, and one of the private groups on on the have tos, the have tos, okay. need tos, uh, shoulds, uh, that energy, that the action energies, which was going to be in the new ebook, guys. Nice. Um, I'll also probably be talking about it at Integrated Man, so I'm going deep into this because this is, to me, this is one of the key, new key elements I'm adding to the revealing process, understanding we all get stuck in that have to scale. So for you guys out there, notice how much um, you guys throughout your day, like comment right now, how much it is your day and I have to do this, I need to do this, I should do this, I've got to do this. Mm -hmm. I, uh, um this has to get done and, and and notice how much stress that creates in your life that's that's a really reactive relationship to tension and it causes massive amounts of uncomfortable stress in the body imagine if you were lifting 25 percent. so yeah i got all of you guys put that in there how much of your day a lot uh, imagine if you're lifting weights because you have to every day i'm going to the gym because i have to i need to i should but not because yeah. you want to or choose to yeah. not because it's something that you love doing how long before you hurt yourself? How long before you burn out? Yep. Um, and uh, I don't see anybody putting anything in the comments. How many of you guys are in that 15%? I don't want to hear it. Um, yeah. Uh, so start to become aware. Where are you mostly, Miklos? Do you love, do you throughout your day, are you in choice? Are you in want to? Do you, you go through the day lightly or do you go through the day burned out, tired at the end of the day? Um, the more you're up in choice, the more you're going to have energy at the end of your day, feel great, that type of stuff. Yeah, for sure. So you've been noticing that relationship? No, for sure. Yeah, so yeah, this is sure. this is a game changer. Like, mm -hmm. the more I work with people in this new area of have to, oh my God, their lives are changing. Yeah, I bet. Trying to approach women from have to is so destructive. It actually you actually get worse at approaching when you're approaching women from have to. Mm -hmm. You don't grow and you're out every day. I have to do this. I have to. Brian told me to do this, so I have to do it to change. Well, that ain't gonna make you better approaching. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna burn the fuck out. Yep. You know, there I am cussing again. Sorry, you. <laughs> You think got to get over it, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just 2020, baby. I'm going to have to have a little buzzer or something. <laughs> right. yeah, um, Everybody's cussing this year. So 40 to 50% um, want to at first, gradually going to have to. That's really honest, probably accurate. Depends on the week, 20 to 70%. Yep, I would say that too. So that's really good. Thank you, guys. Um, so, Sean, uh, let's go to your question. Um, uh, Brian, when I listen to the coaches talk about their experiences and anyone really deep uh, best changes, they reference this uh, three-month program, Edward Brick, Anthony, Josh, uh, so forth. Yep, 
Um, we used to have a three month program. We would do three workshops over three months and then we'd have assignments in between. We don't have that anymore. We have the week longs instead, which you also probably hear a lot of people reference and talk about the power of the week long. Um, the week longs replaced them because of, uh, because they were becoming, as we grew bigger and had a lot more clients, it was becoming harder and harder to service everybody in these three month programs. And, mm -hmm. And we did the week longs and we saw radical growth in the week longs too. So we replaced them. Maybe we'll do one week. I, I, I played with the idea of doing, Eddie talks about the six month I did. I did one six month. Yeah, that's right. And I talked about playing with the idea of doing these again for the really advanced clients, but only like one a year. Um, uh, so I don't know if some of you guys would be interested in something like that, that have done everything else. We could potentially implement something like one of those a year, but that would be, I don't want to do too many. Um, I've also had people ask me for instead of a week long, a month long. And people say, let's yeah, do a whole yeah. month straight of just yeah. working. And I'm like, I don't know about that. <laughs> you kind of talked about that, right? Like getting, maybe getting the house for a month and having, yeah. having everybody live in the house for that whole month. That would also, that would, if I did that, it'd be once a year. That would yeah, be, be like, you'd be hella burned out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we've distributed amongst all of us, but this whole idea that it, that's a month of my life. I got to live in the house and be with everybody, you know, um, <laughs> all day long, day making sure everybody's changing and growing. It's, it's intense. You know, weeks are intense. So, yeah, yeah, Cause, we, Cause we already do two, it's really a two week long if everybody does, you know? And mm -hmm. so. Is there yeah. a yeah, that burns us out a lot. Mm -hmm. We did what three weeks in a row in August. Yeah. Three weeks in a row, we had released an energetic embodiment in the week long, and then the oh events. yeah, we were so tired after that. Yeah. Remember Anna Maria and Dave had to go out to the desert to de decompress. Decompress, yeah. You guys don't realize how much work <laughs> we put into these week longs and these events, especially the week longs. We yeah. put so much intensity. We ground you guys all day long. We're on you guys. We're watching you guys. All the coaches are there. It's draining to our bodies, guys. But we're there because we want you guys to have radical shifts. Right. And um, you were going to say? Yeah, 100%, man. It's yeah. the, the transfer of energy from people, yeah. you know? It, it's, it's crazy. Come, yeah. Monday, come Monday after a workshop, we're, we're like trying to super decompress as much <laughs> as we can. It's like, man, because you take on energy from people easily, yeah. you know, especially if they got a lot of apathy, a lot of anger, something like that. It, it's easy to take it on, yeah. you know? So. But the growth is insane. So some of these guys, it's just, it's so yeah. radical, you know? Um, yeah. So uh, let's see, we're on uh, Sam, um, what time is it right now, 12, 12, okay. Is it possible to be turned on and have sexual connection, have a sexual connection, but not be fully emotionally connected? Go for it. Yeah, for sure. Can you have sex, a sexual connection? That's an interesting one, right? Because you can have, a, can you have a sexual connection without having an emotional connection? Yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah, you for sure. Turn on without, without heart. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can definitely have a sexual connection without having an emotional connection. Mm -hmm. I think personally, the, the sex is better when you do have an emotional connection, though. By far. Yeah, you know, that's more passionate sex. And it can still be, you know, really hot sex, but it's got that element of emotion in it. And mm -hmm. it's way more enjoyable, way more memorable. Yeah, without the emotional connection, sex is only good one or two times. And Dude, then it, yeah. it starts to lose interest. But it could be really passionate mm -hmm. sexually, like crazy the first time. The second time it dies really fast. Third yeah. times in my experience. So the emotional hollow. connection is what keeps it alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're starting to enjoy that more and more. Yeah. So, um, okay, Dan. Yeah. What's up, buddy? Uh, I am playing with taking the lead and, and dominating in the bedroom with my girlfriend. The trouble I find is when I go to say something, whether it's asking for something sexual, directing her into a position, I feel so much tension and I go up into my head. Mm -hmm. From here, I feel that my words don't have any strength. So I tend to avoid saying anything. Very common problem for guys. Yeah. Um, any tips on how to develop this? Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, let go of the shame and the guilt. Yeah, you yeah. have to. Yeah. Especially when you're giving orders and giving commands or if it, instructions, mm -hmm. you gotta, because she's looking for you to be confident in that. Yeah. And she wants to be dominated in that way. You know what I mean? If you feel any, she feels any inkling of insecurity in that, it's just not gonna work. It's yeah, just too bad. Yeah. <laughs> what? Seems like turned off, said it turned on. Dude, yeah. Yeah. So if you get the more, the more confident you can be about saying it, the more direct, the better. Yeah. Yeah, if you're up and if you're not in your turn on, not in your heart, and you're up in your head, and you're like, you know, bend over, it that's just so not sexy for a yeah. woman. But you drop down and you turn on your heart, you feel your body, you ground yourself, and you're like, baby, you're, 
your fucking ass is sexy. Bend over. Bend yeah. over for me now. I want to see. I want to see your ass. Yeah. You know, that's one way. Or another way, you could be more ordery. Depends on how your natural inclination is. Yeah. Um, you need to listen to men dirty talk. It's the best way I found to get over it. Instead of just trying to figure it out, practice it, record it, listen to yourself, learn to feel your turn on, embodiment, your yeah. heart, but also listen to other guys that are good at it. Find whether it's uh, porn where guys dirty talk really well, whether it's podcasts or whether it's ASMR dirty talk uh, on YouTube, which mm -hmm. you can find a lot of that. Um, the Erotic Conversationalist with uh, Roger Allen Curry have some good dirty talk where he interviews people. Uh, these things, um, to me, will help you to build your confidence in your dirty talk. The more you hear somebody talk from his turn on, and you hear the women, uh, you see how many women enjoy it. Like if you go to the ASMR stuff, and you listen to these guys do all this dirty talk on YouTube for women, and you go down to the comments, and you see how many women love it, and how many women are, are subscribed to his channel, that will build your confidence a lot, Dan. So, nice. so try that out. Uh, or get into the sexual shame workshop, uh, sexual transmutation. We don't call it sexual shame. It's getting rid of sexual shame and, and teaching you how to use sexual energy for transmutation, building wealth and success. That is a powerful workshop. Get into that. And perfect, that, perfect that, will that will change you more than anything in this area. You'll do so much dirty talk with actual women live. You'll be, <laughs> and you'll watch how they have, uh, love it and how they respond. You'll, you'll be over that. No problem. Dude, hundred percent. It's like you take that one and you go back to your, your girlfriend. You can be a whole different dude already. Yeah. Yeah. It's right off the bat. Yep. Um, okay. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move on. Um, Vikrant, uh, when I approach p women, I feel fear. I use uh, courage to approach anyway. Awesome. I also do the opening of heart exercise and grounding before I start my approaches. I still get a pattern of girls not talking to me once I start to talk. They just leave. I can't say what's uh, off, but they just go away. I am attending the FML virtual this weekend. Uh, what else can I do? The girls are just walking away when you're talking. My, my guess is that you're not grounding. This is my guess. Yeah, probably. If you're not, if you're not grounding and penetrating, then that's probably why you're getting that result. Um, Cause it, it, it's, it's never really about what you say. It's always about how you feel to them. How you're being, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if, if you go into your head maybe, or you get scared when you're talking to a girl, that's no. probably what she's picking up on. A numbed out heart, yeah. you pulled back emotion, your vocal tones are going up instead mm -hmm. of down because you're not in your body. You know, this is it's all that stuff. And so you're yeah. going to see a lot of that in the FML this weekend. So Yeah, I, I would even say this, man. Uh, embodiment awareness around that. Notice when you walk up to a girl that's hot to her, are you losing the sense of your legs, your grounding, your back, your feet, your heart? You know, because the one thing to practice that before you go out, but when you get in front of a person that's actually a, a real human being, all that substance is just shutting out really subtly and really quick. Mm -hmm. You know, so develop a practice around that too. Yeah, pick one area at a time to work on, like practice feeling your legs when you get comfortable with that, practice feeling your, your heart and practice feeling your turn on, mm -hmm. practice but only you know do five stops just talking to people from your heart do five stops talking to people from your legs or 10 or 20. um you don't have to just talk to beautiful women you can stop as you can spend you can talk to 100 people a day on the street every day for like two minutes each a minute each or maybe 30 seconds each you know or, or you know 50 people a day maybe that's too that's a lot of, a lot of time but um and what will happen is you'll start to develop awareness of your body a lot faster. Yes, include beautiful women in there, but talk to everybody and get practice. Just, okay, for the next 10 people, I'm going to practice feeling my legs. Yeah. Next 10 people, I'm going to practice. And we do this. Mm -hmm. We Experience. do this with students. Yeah, and I've, do, I've done 100 people a day many times. So that's mm -hmm. why I said that. Sometimes they're very, unless I'm doing long conversations. If I'm doing short, really short interactions, I, I can do 100, no problem. Yeah. You want to comment on that? Because you've done a lot of that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I remember distinctly how that worked. People wouldn't stop and talk or I couldn't carry conversations past maybe 10 seconds, you mm -hmm. know, you'd be like, feel your legs, feel your legs. So this next, mm -hmm. these next, this next five interactions you do in a row, your leg is your primary focus. And it has a strange effect when you're feeling your legs on the ground. People are just standing there. They're kind of, they're not leaving. Even if you run out of things to say, they're just kind of still lingering around a little bit. And it's kind of like, why, why does that work? It's so weird, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it works. It does work. It yeah. does. I've actually remember you stopped three girls on third street and I was standing behind you watching you. And this is after you've been 
working with us for a while. Yeah, yeah. And you were actually a coach at this time. And I just remember how much you, you went, walked up, and you grounded and pulled those girls in. You didn't keep talking to them very long. You talked to them for a few, a, maybe a minute. And then you said, okay. And they were like, you could see they wanted to keep talking because you were grounded. I could feel it happen to my body, even behind you. I was like, yeah. whoosh, this energy of grounding. It was really beautiful. Yeah, nice. So you really, so you really mastered that. And I was really impressed. I was like, damn, Anthony's doing good. Yeah, I would have loved him behind me to yeah. feel that myself. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say? I, said, I would have loved to be behind me to feel that myself. Yeah. You know? It's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's amazing how much people feel this stuff, you know, and, and it is. It's really neat. Yeah. So, um, so there you go, guys. Um, let's go to the next one. We'll do a couple more, but we're getting, getting on an hour and a half, so I don't like to go past that usually. Uh, we've got an anonymous one. Guys, uh, this is a dating question. Um, but what do you think about when a girl asks for space after being pushy? Is she being pushy or you're being pushy? Uh, do you re-engage after you work on yourself and truly change and play with her energy or wait for her to re-engage? Oh, so he, so he was probably pushy. And then he's asking, how, how do you get this girl? And she's asking you to back off. And she, he's asking, how do you get her back on the line? How do you yeah. get her talking to you again? Yeah, that's, that's an easy one. Do the work on yourself. <laughs> do the work on what's the neediness, what's the pushiness all about, mm. and, and stop doing it. Feel what's behind that. Feel that what's behind that push to try to get something from her, or whatever the push might be. I don't know what it's in regards to exactly with you and your situation, but like this girl, for instance, the the the, the Brazilian girl I'm talking about, right? Like two years ago when I met her, or a year ago, whatever. Yeah, it was definitely pushy. I was trying to get her back to my place, I'm trying to get her over. I was pushing really hard, and she's vanish and again i saw her number on my phone saw her number on my phone the other day and i just messaged out of nowhere because i knew I, I i knew i changed for sure and i wasn't gonna be that pushy guy anymore i was just gonna be like cool if she responds back cool it'd be different i know for sure i feel it and it has been right and she wants to hang out so take some time to work on that find out what the pushing this is and start to do some work around it do some releasing around it do a workshop around it and then What's going to happen is you're probably going to stop worrying about this particular girl because you're probably going to meet other women in the process of getting better with yourself and then you hit her up spontaneously one day and just see if she responds she, maybe see if she's receptive yeah i've had that happen many times mm -hmm. that's actually one of the most important processes for getting much better is you find these girls like i was one girl in my life that i really liked and i'd be too pushy or i'd be too this and then i'd back off for a while come back and she's fine and I must have done it five, six, seven times. Dude, yeah. And I'd see her come back and she and then she'd respond completely different to me and you know, and, and treat me different because I was different now. So Yeah. All that once, you know? Yeah. A lot of you get to learn to get control of that one thing. Like when you have a when you have a girl you're really wanting and you start working on actually controlling it with her and mm -hmm. setting her free. Like how can I enjoy her, appreciate her? That was literally what I was doing. How can I laugh with her and not want anything from her? Still say, hey, let's hang out, but yeah. be completely unattached to her response. Still make her feel beautiful, sweet. Yeah. And as you get better and better at that, she, like she'll start to appreciate you more and more. And then that'll affect all the other women that you see it from that point forward. Exactly what you just 100%. said. That Brazilian was a perfect example, I think you, because I was thinking of that when he asked. So Yeah. I would even say this just kind of off the cuff. If you guys are watching porn, stop <laughs> because mm. it makes you really needy. Because yeah. it, it does, it messes with your head. I think it feels like it makes you feel like you need to get laid right away. And when you meet a girl, you feel like you got to go straight down the path right away to get laid. It's like you, you don't. No. Like kind of meet her on that level where you see her as a human being, and then that stuff naturally, by natural, like byproduct of being cool, to her liking your vibe, sex happens. Yeah, girls want to want to dance. Dude, they want to be seduced they want to seduce they, they want to be seducing too they want to dance they want an exchange of energy they don't want to just go right to sex yeah. most of the time there are some but most of them want to dance yeah yeah it, it probably gives them a lot of information about you yeah yeah the dance is how they figure out who you are and yeah. whether they you're the type of guy they want to be with mm -hmm. And because you're not going to tell them directly, who, you know, you're going to lie to them. You're not. Of gonna, course. <laughs> a guy, a girl goes, are you confident? <laughs> yes, I'm confident. Or no, I'm not. <laughs> she needs to figure, she needs to see how, you, she needs to test you and see how you're being, yeah. you know, to know if you're confident. So, okay. Um, we've reached a point, 1224. Let me see. There's quite a bit left, but we're not going to get to these. I'm going to add, I'm going to answer one more niche because Anish is one of our clients here. I'm yeah, going to jump to him. A uh, question about leading. A lot of times when I do have sex with girls on dates, I just lead her to my place and it happens. Well, that's because you've done a lot of our work, buddy. 
Um, however, I tried just uh, chilling with a girl in a bar without doing uh, to see if it just happens, but the last few times it didn't. What's your feeling on that? Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I mean, what's what's your intention with not trying to lead to sex? Because I feel like this, like it, it's it's always got to be going somewhere to some degree. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, you could just sit there and talk and have a platonic conversation, but yeah, naturally, it's probably not going to go to sex. You know, are you flirting? Are you are you being sexual? Are you touching? Things like that. That's the kind of stuff that naturally leads to sex. And if it's not going there, then there's something going on. You know what I mean? So try this, Anish, um, based on what you just said, is you do have to lead something, right? That's the, the masculine's yeah. job. The feminine's job then fills up the container. You can create a container and then you lead it. And then she fills the container up with the flow and the flirty. So based on what he said, if you want to test this out, how can you play with her at the bar if you really like her and you guys are having fun and amp up uh, sexual tension, yeah. uh, turn on, and, and then see what she does with it? Because if you're just sitting there not doing anything, yeah, eventually the energies are all going to die out. So if you're not going to take her, if you want to practice not taking her home and see what she does with it, you got to, you know, amp up the turn on, amp up the play, amp up the fun, amp up the sexual tension and see if she starts to lead it somewhere, wants to su start suggesting like subtle suggestions and things like that. Yeah. So uh, unless you're already doing that, that seems, um, it seems to me like you're probably just kind of sitting there. And she may be enjoying you. You may be grounding. She may think you're hot. She may give you a number. But if you're not amping up turn on, why would she? Yeah, 100%. You know, yeah, you're being passive. You use what you wrote over there in the, mm -hmm. in the question. Um, awesome, guys. So really good. Uh, glad we could answer that for you, Anish. And I know you're capable of doing this, Anish. I, you know, you're, you've got a lot of skill. He's done our week longs and stuff like that. Easy. Um, so guys, uh, remember the Integrated Man Summit is coming up in the first weekend in, um, in, yeah, in December. In December, and we got an experience coming up then too. I think it's our next experience is in uh, Miami. Yep, yep. And uh, I love Miami, guys. This event is my favorite of the year because everybody speaks. It's super bonding. We all have fun together. We all hang out together. And for those of you that really want to work with all the coaches and get to talk to Anthony in person, ask him yep. questions directly yep. and ask him questions off camera, on the side, get direct, you know, un, unedited feedback from him, get all the releases, then you need to come to the event live. If you guys just want to get some of the, the, the basic information of everybody's talk, you can do that online. And there's a link already in the, um, in the, in the chat. I highly recommend you guys get out there. It's Florida. So it's going to be, it's going to be December. So the temperature is, is really nice in December. Oh, uh, sweet beautiful women everywhere. The sun's out. Um, that's why we love going there. Last year I had to leave a little early. Uh, my dog was passing away, so I didn't get to stay for the next week. I, I actually did the event, and then I, there was a, an experience the next week, and I didn't get to stay for that. But uh, it was still, uh, you know, I didn't want to leave. It, but I love my dog, so I wasn't going to let, yeah, you know, yeah. I was going to be with her. So this year, I plan to be there for a week straight. Um, you know, I'll be having coffees with you guys, meeting you guys, hanging out with you guys, answering all your personal questions. Our goal is to impart as much information from as many of the coaches as possible. You know, Anthony, how to do less. Uh, Anthony, on all his approach skills, because he's so good at approaching. Anthony, on, you know, really just relaxing into your body and not pushing anymore, because he used to push a lot, and now you, you're just getting so calm. So if you really want to learn this stuff from Anthony, as well as Josh, as well as Sam, like if you want to learn it, and Sam's you know, older guy, teaches you how to uh, be successful as an older man. He's 64, and he dates a lot of younger women, and he's super successful with women. Um, um, you know, Anna Maria, our first female coach, uh, Mark Edward Davis, who was just killed last yeah, year. Yeah, and he's, awesome he's one of the few guys outside the company, potentially Eddie, we're, we're in discussions right now, who's going to talk on vulnerability and all his vulnerability experience. For those of you guys that know Eddie from all the, uh, the private groups and the talks he does there, doesn't he kick ass? Like he has done so, he, he's married now. Uh, he got, a, he got married after he met us. Beautiful woman. I was out to dinner with both of them last night, nice, nice. had a great dinner with him and his wife. And, um, his wife might come work for us for a bit. It's one of the models yeah. actually. She's yeah, gorgeous. gorgeous girl. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. so, uh, so if you guys are ready for a serious, uh, experience, how many of you guys would like to, uh, come to Miami or thinking about it, trying to figure it out so you can hang out with us? Just put it in the comments if you if it's something you're interested in. You don't have to do it, but just if you're interested in, let me know. Because I'm super excited to get to this event. It's my, like I said, it's my favorite event of the year. Yeah, mine too. 
tray for the experience, maybe. Uh, I want to experience Miami. I purchased virtual, the virtual already. If you can get there live, Javier, I get there live. There's going to be a lot more live, too. It's going to get even crazier live. Yeah. In December, first weekend in December. Yep, broke. Uh, uh, oh, you're in the Netherlands. Yeah, you'll, we'll be back in. Next year, we'll be back in Bucharest, Jay. So I want to get to the Netherlands. I need to get over there. I'm, uh, um, I mean, I, I've, I've been to Amsterdam, but, you know, that's, that's about it. And uh, several times in Amsterdam. Uh, but I need to get back over there. So guys, uh, give this a look, see, check out, do me a favor and check out the, the link if you haven't checked it out. Um, so we can all uh, potentially have fun together. Uh, yeah, it's an easy flight from North Carol Carolina. Actually, I love North Carolina, that Lake Norman, <laughs> really good time out there. And South Carolina, I want to go check out South Carolina too. Uh, yeah, you, are you, Miklos, you're in Europe though, right? So you can't even come to the US, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, what part of Europe are you in? Hungary. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, man, we're just in Budapest. Yeah, so yeah, there you go. We were just there hanging out, mm -hmm. walking around your beautiful city. Yep. And then, uh, but you can come to Bucharest next year when we go over there. Yeah, uh, Rajarshi's from India. Yep, yep. I got to get to India. I was supposed to go there. I, I've never been to India. I was supposed to go stay for a month at one time. It never worked out. Um, yeah, Nor Lake Norman. My buddy, uh, one of my mentors lives on Lake Norman, has a boat and a house on Lake Norman. Um, can't come to the U.S. We got a lot of guys that are overseas. Uganda, nice. Yeah, we do. Wow, from Ireland. Yeah, uh, I'm 51 percent British Irish, apparently, according to 23 of me. So I need to get to Ireland too. Yeah, you fit right in. <laughs> okay, okay, guys. Um, uh, yeah, I, I definitely. I've, I've, I when I it was funny. I landed in Ireland and um, stayed overnight in the airport because it was a, a layover and I had to stay overnight. And and I walked outside and took a walk out into, and I loved it. I, I didn't, I wasn't going there to stay in Ireland. I just got stuck there for a night. Uh -huh. And I was like pulled to the city. I just remember this just now. And I remember I was like, I need to go visit this city. I need to go visit this. I didn't, and then I just recently found out I'm 51% British Irish. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Just yeah. for that home? <laughs> yeah, I did. I felt super comfortable. I was like, I love the people. I like this place. Yeah. And it was really interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I definitely need to come visit. Um, okay, guys. Uh, awesome talking to you today. I hope you guys all had a good time. Uh, remember, you can all do it virtually. Uh, it's going to be an amazing event uh, for all you European guys. Um, I appreciate that, Sam. I would love to visit. I'm definitely going to at some point. And maybe I'll do a little meetup out there at one of your pubs and we'll all hang out and have a beer or something. I don't really drink beer anymore because, because I can't handle the gluten. But That's true. But when you're in Ireland, you got to yeah. do it with a, as well, do a shot, do something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Figure something out. And then uh, we'll go from there. But again, uh, the link is in the, in the, uh, in the uh, thing. Uh, do me a favor, guys. If you love the content, check it out. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like the video. Send Anthony a nice message so you can go to the to comments and check out your messages and find out what you want more. I'm going to definitely yeah. have him probably back awesome. in here again before the Integrated Man Summit. Awesome. Um, uh, yeah. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to uh, we put comment, subscribe, like, make hit the bell icon, and make sure you don't miss any videos because that's important because we're doing a lot more of them. Yep. Um, and um, I think that's it. Anything else you want to say? No, it's been a pleasure, man. Love awesome. being on this call with you guys. So. Okay, guys, and remember, only the confident really live. We'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.